Hi there, in this video I'm going to talk about what are the pressure limits in water supply systems and why. Last time I explained that pressure is the distance from the hydraulic gradient line to the ground level, or better, the pipe level. Pressure can be conveniently measured in meters for design, but it's well worth it to learn a few easy conversions to deal with instruments and pipes. That is, 10 meters equals 1 bar equals 1 kilogram of force per square centimeter. So let's see these values. Zero pressure usually means not enough water, the trickle on the tap, if anything at all. The minimum pressure anywhere, at any moment, in the system is 10 meters or 1 bar. Sometimes we need to depressurize a pipe in a very specific location, but let's forget about that for now. Note that this is at consumption points. That means that it's measured at tap level and it's the higher users that are more critical. Since pressures are usually measured at ground level, some codes establish a minimum of 25 meters or 2.5 bar. Now all of this is within reason. If a building is very tall, then it may have to have its own pumping system to keep pressure. The maximum pressure is set at 60 meters. There are a few exceptions to these 60 meters that we'll come back to in a minute. Having a very high pressure may seem great to reach all users, however, it's one of the main causes of leaks, damage to pipes, wasted water, and flooding. These events and their consequences grow greatly with pressure. Pipes are usually rated for 10 or 16 bar, and pressure has to be kept well below that to leave some margin for water hammer. There's also a quote-unquote maximum pressure at tap level, 3 bar. By keeping water below that pressure on most points, we achieve a user-friendly system and avoid adding the cost of many pressure reducers everywhere. Have a look at these images. At 3 bar, you need both hands to open a self-closing tap and you get your feet wet. Also, most of the water is wasted, as once the water is cut and the bubbling frenzy comes to an end, there will be little water in the bucket. High pressure is also a barrier to access if self-closing taps are installed. These women had to ask a man to open the tap for them, so on top of getting little help carrying the load, they are made more dependent. A weak or old person is also excluded. I must say I'm not a big fan of this tap, so I'll continue my rant. These taps also do a great job at washing the user's hands dirt into the container, and in many cases they end up wasting more water because people find ways of blocking them. There are some logical exceptions to these rules. For example, if a pipe goes through a valley, it will probably go over 6 bars at some point. It will make no sense to depressurize the pipe on its way down to then have to pump on the way up. In cases like this, the rule is ignored and higher rating pipes are installed. Pressures below 10 meters are risky for many reasons. Technically, it is risky because there's little room for surveying errors and other unpredicted situations. The pipe's carrying capacity declines over time, and trap air can completely block pipes with little pressure. Socially, because trickles waste people's times, and they may resort to less safe water sources. Yes, drinking from a safe water source is very important, but so is tending your children, going to school, or looking for your relatives and friends after a disaster. You can also see pressure as a kind of chlorine. It keeps the pathogens out. All mains leak, as much as 20% for new systems. The leak water mixes with the surrounding liquids from parallel sewers and nearby latrines and pits. If the pipe is pressurized, these liquids can make it in. It's like swimming up a waterfall. But as the pressure lowers, it becomes easier. And if the pressure goes to zero and the pipe empties, they're actually sucked in just like you would do with your straw in a lemonade. As if this dirty water accumulating inside wasn't bad enough on its own, it also prevents chlorine from working. With high contents of organic matter, chlorine becomes inactive quickly. This is why intermittent distribution is such a bad idea. Now, there are some points where it is just not possible to have 10 meters. For example, at the start of lines. The way to go is to pressurize them as quickly as possible by choosing the steepest route in their beginnings, even if it means installing a little bit more pipe. 
This video was a little bit longer than I expected, so we'll leave the pipe sizing for the next. Thanks for watching, and if it has helped you, please think of someone you may want to share it with. Bye, see you next time.